Generally speaking, when it comes to PlayStation 1 style models, you want to keep things as simple as possible. There are many objects that can be represented by what is essentially a textured cube, so this is the perfect place for us to start. To start with, I'm going to show how I recreate this crate model. When you open Blender, this is the view you are greeted by. The first thing you want to do is go to this panel in the top right, which shows all of the objects in the scene. Here is the cube that we see, as well as a light and a camera. Go ahead and delete the light and the camera, as we'll be importing our model into the game engine anyway. So in this case, as the crate is already a cube, we don't need to change the model at all. Now to get that signature pixelated look, we first need to edit our crate texture and reduce it down to a fitting size. It's easy enough to find free crate textures online, just pick one that you like. Open up your image editor of choice. In this case, I'm going to be using GIMP, which is a free alternative to Photoshop. I often find that my textures start to look rather blurry when I scale them down, so I first like to increase the contrast of the texture a little bit. After that, scale the texture down to an appropriate size. Generally speaking, the largest textures that were commonly used on the PlayStation 1 were 128 by 128 in size. A crate is a rather small object, so I've decided to scale this texture down to 32 by 32. Save this and return to Blender. Next, go to the shading tab at the top here. This is where we apply textures to the models. Once you're in this view, click add here, go to texture and select image texture. Then click open and navigate to your texture. Then drag this color node to the base color to apply the texture. It doesn't look correct right now, but we'll fix that in a moment. Make sure to also turn the specular down to zero and roughness up to one to get rid of any reflections. Finally, make sure to change the texture filtering mode to closest as the PlayStation 1 did not support texture filtering. To make the texture look correct on the model, we're going to do what is called UV mapping, which is essentially telling Blender how the texture should be applied to each face of the model. Go to the UV editing tab. Make sure you're in editing mode. This can be changed here, or you can simply press tab to switch between object and editing mode. Make sure to also be in face select mode. You can do this by clicking here or simply press three on the keyboard. Finally, click here to make sure you're in material preview mode. Now, when you select a face in the left window, you can see which part of the texture is being applied to the face. As you can see, the square on the texture is too small and not using the whole texture. To fix this, select all the faces on the cube. You can hold shift to drag and select multiple faces and then select all the vertices on your texture. Scale up the map and then move it so it's correctly aligned with the texture. If the texture is rotated incorrectly, then rotate it and fix the alignment. And that's all there is to create a simple crate. Next, we're going to recreate the shipping container. This object isn't a perfect cube, so in the layout tab, go into edit mode and select all the faces on the cube. Then, using the scale tool, rescale the cube until it's an appropriate shape. Now the process for creating the texture is a little more complex. Generally speaking, you're not going to find nicely made unwrapped textures for objects online, so you'll have to make them yourself. Here, I've gone online and found a free image of a shipping container. Now, we're going to correct the perspective of this to create our own unwrapped texture. Use the free select tool to select the face of the object. Then, use the perspective tool to manipulate it until it is rectangular. It looks a bit stretched, but once we scale it down, you won't be able to notice this anymore. Copy this onto a separate image and then repeat this process for all sides of the object. In this case, I'm going to reuse this side texture on all four long faces of the object and then simply use the heel tool to remove this logo on the top and bottom faces for a bit of variation. Then simply scale down your texture as before. Then in Blender, the process is exactly the same as with the crate. Simply apply the texture to the model and then manipulate each face of the model one by one to match the appropriate part of the texture. And that's it. This approach will take you a long way to creating all kinds of different PS1 style objects. In the next video, I'll show you how to begin editing the model itself in more complex ways to create other types of objects such as these. Make sure to subscribe if you found this useful and to be notified once that video comes out. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.